Hey guys, welcome to our new series where we take you behind the scenes in our preparation for World's Strongest Man. In today's episode, we'll be taking you through our new recovery routine. Recovery is essential for all athletes, especially strong men, because we push our bodies to the limits every single day. In preparation for World's Strongest Man, we've tried some new techniques for recovery. And we've asked ourselves a simple question, do these recovery methods work and have we felt the benefits? We'll be looking at four sources of recovery, physio, hot and cold, hydrobaric chamber and sleep. But first, let's see what a typical morning for the both of us looks like before we get started. Right guys, so what you've seen is a typical morning that both Tom and myself do. We're a little bit varied in what we do. I like to go out to the cold water every morning. That allows me to have that mental clarity, that mental reset to really kickstart the day. So it's very important, although it's not specifically recovery, it's recovery for here and allows me to prep for the busy day ahead. As Tom and I both lead very busy lives. We have a business, we have training to do every day, we have constant eating. A mental focus and mental clarity is very important for those days. So that's why I do my cold water in the morning every day. So Tom, we just saw you going out for a run. I know you, you do a bit of running now. You go out for every morning uh, to walk your dogs. So does that help you in a mental reset, mental focus? How does that help? Yeah, so the running and dogs first thing in the morning helps me, one, you know, reset, focus, helps me get blood around the muscles, gets me ready for the challenges that day has ahead. So first up on the list of recovery is physiotherapy. Physiotherapy is probably the most common used uh, recovery tool out there. It allows someone to get hands on in their muscles to really kind of massage and get out any stress or any strain in our muscles. Ross that we see, he comes up every Tuesday and Wednesday. We see him roughly for about 30 minutes to an hour um, once a week. He'll get hands on into our muscles, any sore muscles, any stiffness. He'll activate and release that stress. So on top of that, Tom, you also see Mr. Neil Rooney. I used to see him, I haven't seen him in a little while, but he's kind of an alternative therapist that you see as well. So you want to talk a little bit about what he does? Neil gets uh, some of the signals in my body kind of tuned up and stuff. He resets my whole body, kind of does an MOT to my body. He's like a physio guru. I feel amazing after I see him and it's just something different that I like to add into my routine as well. Next up on the recovery list is hot and cold contrast. So Tom and I do this after every training day, uh, a few hours after we train, we go in, we'll use the sauna, which gets up to kind of over 100 degrees, and then we go into the cold tub, which gets down to as low as zero degrees. So again, we do this in a contrast way. So we start in the hot, then we go into the cold. We do that two to three times. We usually spend up to three minutes in the cold water, and we go back into the sauna, spend maybe 10 minutes in there, heating our body up, and then going back into the cold as well. So this is hugely important for us. You're quite a big advocate of us, Big Tommy. How do you find it for you? I think the contrast for myself is more, the most beneficial. I do it last thing at night, because also this helps with sleeping kind of winding down as well. And uh, yeah, I do eight to 10 minutes in the sauna, three minutes in the cold tub. A lot of benefits to this really does help improve your recovery. It helps in sleep and just helps in life. So next up on the list and the newest addition to our recovery is the hyperbaric chamber. Been very privileged to get one of these in the office. So basically what this does is pump pure oxygen into the chamber. The chamber goes to one and a half times atmospheric pressure. So we've got a mask or a, a nose tube in that pumps in fresh oxygen into our body. And then with the pressure that is under, it puts in fresh oxygen into the nitty gritty parts of your body. So it helps you recover so much better and a lot quicker. So basically, I don't know what it is, maybe three, four times as, as quick as recovery. Um, and we tend to do this, it's usually like five days a week, then we take a day off and then go back in. So the more consistency you can get in using the, the hyperbaric chamber, the better it is for your recovery. And this has been a huge thing for us as, as part of the, the prep for World's Strongest Man, hasn't it? I've always uh, wanted to get one. I've always wanted to try one and to actually try it first hand and to see the benefits of it has been absolutely 
amazing and it's helped my performance and it helps Luke's performance. Train for World's Strongest Man. So last, but by no means least, is how we sleep. So our sleep routines. So sleep is obviously a massive part of our recovery. And over the last few months, we've really added in a few different things. So for me and my setup, having Koa has kind of interrupted my sleep quite a lot. So I've been having a conversation with Kushi. Kushi's allowed me to sleep in the spare room. Um, I've also got an infrared sauna blanket there. I've got an infrared light. And then I've got a, a Lumi alarm clock, which mimics the sunrise and, and helps me wake up properly the way, um, as natural as you can. I've also really invested in making the room as dark as I can, so I don't want any light. So the darker the room, the better your sleep is. The benefits of doing infrared sauna before you sleep is that it doesn't increase your heart rate like a finished sauna would. It really gets you ready for that sleep uh, in the blanket. And then with the infrared light as well, you're wanting to drop exposure to blue light. So screen time on your phone, TV, switch that off an hour and a half before bed. I'll do my infrared light, which is supposed to increase your, your sleep and help you sleep as well as recovery. And then get into bed, lights completely off and I'm in just pitch black and ready to go to sleep. And, you know, looking at my whoop results, my sleep has increased. I went from getting four to five hours sleep when Cole was born. So I'm up to kind of seven to eight hours a night, which is which is considerably better. And I owe that all to the, the kind of little bits and pieces I've done, as I just explained. And Big Tommy, you've got a little bit different. You've... I'm, a, I'm scared of the dark. <laughs> Mine's a bit different. I have something called eight sleep, which, um, I think is a very, very effective thing. Kind of just like a big electric blanket you can put on your bed and you can control. I think sleeping at the right temperature is a really key kind of thing to get your sleep right as well. My bed used to be very, very hot. Sinead liked the room to be really hot. So obviously being bigger men, I used to wake up a lot in the sleep and didn't get any good quality sleep. So I found eight sleep and it's a, yeah, it's a basically a mattress. You can control each side of the bed. So Sinead can have her side, I can have my side, I can set it to 10 degrees lower than room temperature or 10 degrees higher than room temperature. You have to you know, play around with it for a while, but then it automatically then tunes into what your body's used to. And then it just gives you that much better and effective sleep. Very effective and simple thing to add to your routine. Okay guys, so that is basically all we are doing at the moment to recover. And just to give you an idea of a, a timeline when we do it, pretty obvious I think, but when we wake up in the morning, that's when I go for my sunrise swim. That's when Tom goes out for his walk with the dogs or run. We then come back, we get physio in the morning as well, pre-training. We then go to the gym and train. And then after training, depending we finish, say we finish at two, three o'clock, we usually come back in the evening time to do our hot and cold contrast. And then after that, we then go into the hyperbaric chamber for an hour. That takes us up to pretty good timing just before bed, get into that sleep space, switch off that blue screens and, and really get ready for sleep. And then we sleep for a minimum of seven hours and then we wake up when we do the same again. So that is our timeline of recovery. Right guys, so that is the recovery routine that both Tom and myself have been doing. And with that being said, you might be asking which one of those recovery methods will help you win World's Strongest Man? And the answer is all of them. <laughs> all of them, yeah. So it's not just a case of doing one, it's not a case of just buying a hyperbaric chamber and then not doing everything else. Basically, Tom and I committed to both both of each other 12 weeks ago when we started World's Strongest Man Prep. We said we need to recover harder than we've ever recovered before. So that's why we've got the hyperbaric chamber. Obviously, with Koa being born, I need to look into sleep. We spoke to a doctor uh, who really advised us on sleep routines and how to get into the best sleep possible. And we've implemented all that. All those little things is what we've done and we've made a commitment to each other. So the hot and cold every day, the waking up, going for a sunrise swim, Tom going out for a walk with his dogs. I believe that we're recovering the hardest out of all of the athletes. I believe that, I truly do, because we're consistent. We, we back each other every day and that's why we're able to train harder than we've ever trained before. Tom has won Britain's Strongest Man, made podium at Arnold's. I've just won Europe's Strongest Man and then we go straight back into training because of the recovery way, because of how hard we're recovering. Eddie Hall said it before, you know, whoever recovers the hardest will win World's Strongest Man. What do you think, Big Tommy? Yes, don't cut corners, 100% and everything we're doing and the results speak for themselves. Right guys, that is the first episode over with. I hope you enjoyed us going through our recovery methods for prep for World Strawless Man. Next week, stay tuned for episode two where we take you through the fitness and what we've been doing differently 
and prep for World's Strongest Man. And guys, stay, stay, smile and stay spicy. And please don't ever stop ringing that little bell. Ding -a 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 -a